Anyone familiar with Norse mythology will be aware of Jormungandr, the world serpent. This was a fearsome sea-dwelling beast. But there are a number of other watery monsters in Norse and neighbouring mythology. This will not be an exhaustive list, but we'll look at some of these mythical creatures. A legend emanating from Scotland, but with Norse equivalents, the Kelpie is described as a shape-shifting female entity that inhabits the country's lochs. It is often described as having the form of a horse, but can transform into a human-like appearance. According to some legends, when it is in its human form, the creature retains its hooves, leading to associations with the devil. The legend of the Kelpie could be very old, emanating from a pre-Christian paganism involving human sacrifice to water deities, or they could be a kind of bogeyman tale to keep children away from the dangers of water. Inevitably, when considering mysterious creatures in Scottish lochs, one thinks instantly of Loch Ness, and the cigar-shaped Highlands watercourse is a hotbed of Kelpie legends, these horse-shaped alleged denizens of Loch Ness have morphed over the years and with scientific discovery into the very different but still long-necked and four-limbed conception of a surviving plesiosaur. The Kelpie is not the only equine cryptid to haunt bodies of water in Celtic or Norse parts of the British Isles, with similar entities under different local names a feature throughout isolated wetland environments. These include the Nuggle in Shetland, the Tangi in Orkney, and the Kefildor in Wales. In Germanic and Scandinavian myth, Nicks were known under a number of names. The German and Scandinavian Nix was male, with females being called Nixer. They were freshwater mermen and mermaids, respectively. In England, a similar word, Nucker, referred to a dragon, worm or wyvern. But more similar entities to the Nix or Nixer were recorded in English folklore, like the malevolent river hag Jenny Greenteeth. What this establishes is that these disparate but linguistically close groups of people, Germanic, Scandinavian and English, all had similar tales and words for threatening water-dwelling creatures. This either points to their shared heritage or genuine fears of the unknown dangers of water in each community and a shared willingness to propagate this kind of folklore. Nix is also etymologically close to the Old English Nikor or Water Witch, like the mother of the antagonist Grendel in the epic poem Beowulf. Another epic poem, the German Nibelungenlied, associates the Nix with the river Danube from as early as 1180. The later German tale of Lorelei is also in keeping with the Nix legend. Nixes were said to have fish-like tails, but were capable of shape-shifting abilities and could appear almost indistinguishable from humans, save for wet hair, slit ears and damp clothes. The creature was also associated with the frog-faced Slavic Vodionoi or Vodnik, which was said to have drowned people and animals. I'm including Selkies and Finfolk here as one entry, as their range is similar and their behaviour, notably mating with humans, also links them, although the nature and dynamics of these relationships are markedly different. Selkies were said, in some legends, to have been created of cursed humans and were condemned to live as seal folk for some past sin. Selkies appear in Scottish mythology as a kind of shapeshifter between seals and humanoids, they achieved the transformation by shedding their outer seal skin. Sailors, especially those around Scotland's Northern Isles, Shetland and Orkney, and the Faroe Islands told tales of stealing naked female selkie seal skins to force them into relationships with humans. The tragic tale gets worse for the selkie who longs for the sea from her landlocked captivity. As soon as she recovers her skin, she abandons the husband and any children she has had with him and returns to the ocean. Some stories claim that she will visit her children on land intermittently in her seal guise. Male selkies were also alluring for human women. They were said to prey on and seduce fisherwives whose husbands spent long periods at sea. One story concerning the pseudonymous Ursula recounts such a liaison. The lovelorn Orkley Islander would weep seven tears into the sea to summon her selkie lover. Hybrid offspring of humans and selkies, as reported in the case of Ursula and her lover, were said to have webbed hands. As a result of the selkie myth, it was considered a bad omen to kill seals to make use of their fur and blubber in the remote landscape of Orkney and Shetland, even in the hardest of times. Selkies can be seen as captive slave women or sexually promiscuous men. Their relationship to humans was one of victim or trickster. The same cannot be said of another contemporaneous Orkney legend, that of the so-called finfolk. 
The dark and allegedly sorcerous finfolk represent a more threatening and malevolent enemy to humanity, hailing from the mythical undersea realms of Finfolkahim, Finfolk Home, and Hilderland, Hidden Land. They were known for venturing to the shallows and the shores in search of human captives. Legends state that both sexes took part in the enslavement of people who were spirited away to become a spouse of a fin man or fin wife. This was said to be necessary in order to magically prolong the beauty of the fin folk. Human menfolk were said to be lured by beautiful mermaids who sang siren-like to entrap them. Male finfolk opted for subterfuge and disguise in order to outwit human slaves. The dwellings of finfolk borrow from the notion of the sunken city of Atlantis. With impressive megastructures, alluring decorations and advanced technology in the case of Finfolk Aim, or a mythical island like the Arthurian Avalon in the case of Hilderland. Hilderland itself is often associated with the now uninhabited island of Ean Hallow, which is now kept as a bird sanctuary. The examples of the Selkie and Finfolk legends highlight the strong sexual themes often associated with mermaids and mermen. They present a barely concealed tale of suppressed lust and stifling morality. The supposed promiscuity of the Selkie can be seen as a reaction against Christian orthodoxy of uninhibited sexual gratification. But the darker side of these lusts are exposed by the loss forever of oneself to the alluring but malevolent finfolk. The Norse Aegir is referred to as a Jotun, or giant slash troll. He was not a deity himself, but was said to be a friend of the gods, including Thor and Tyr. While venerated in Norse mythology as a kind of master of the seas, it is possible his name could be pre-Norse and have very ancient Indo-European origins. Icelandic chronicler Snorri Sturluson, who wrote the Prose Edda and Skaldskapamal, linked the figure of Ygir to the sea giant Hlaer. Hlaer is also potentially the same as the old Irish sea god Lair or Lear, who corresponds with the Welsh Hlaer. Shakespeare's pseudo-historical King Lear, a pre-Roman Celtic king, has often been linked to Hlaer. Lear, or Lair, was said to have been part of the line of Brutus, who, according to legend, fled to what is now Britain from the ruins of Troy after the Trojan defeat of the Greeks. This storied history highlights the common mythology of different peoples across the centuries and lends weight to the idea that Aegir has an ancient and potentially Indo-European past. In terms of his appearance, Aegir has been shown as humanoid with a long white beard, a muscular body and scaly and finned arms and legs. He was said to live in an undersea palace of coral walls, white sandy floors and with multicoloured seaweed as decoration. Aegir was married to Ran, a sea goddess who was said to have trapped seafarers with a net and pulled them underwater to their deaths. Mythology states that they had nine daughters who personified waves. More on these and similar mythological creatures can be found in my book, The Little Book of Mermaids, which is out now on Amazon. The link is in the description. For now, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. And you can also support the channel on Subscribestar via the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.